What's up guys, it's Euphoria here. Today we are going to be looking at modulation within Massive. Okay, so modulation. Um, down here we've got, um, as you can see, the blue ones are envelopes, these blue tabs. We have the green ones, which are LFOs, Performance and Stepper. We're going to look at these all in detail. Okay, so but first let's just look at how you would apply or how you would modulate parameters with with these. So let's say I've got a low pass up here. Okay, and I want to um, to put an LFO on here. I would simply click at this little crosshair here, drag it up to, um, so I've been fiddling around, that's why it's performing differently to how yours would, but um, so the crosshair here, you drag up to these one of these boxes here so obviously you start with one on the left and then what you can do is by clicking and dragging up and down pretty much what you're saying now is is this is an LFO okay so it's it's shaped like a sign we can look at all of this in in detail but it's this knob is actually going to swing up and then down and then up and then down and that's controlled by however much so for instance like this it's going to go all the way closed and then all the way open Okay, all the way closed, all the way open. For an envelope, the best one is to look at the amplitude envelope, which is set over here. Um, so if we were to put an envelope on here, we could control how much the modulation affects the knob. Okay, so now let's have a look at, um, at the various different types. Okay, so um, let's look at uh, the envelope. First here we have uh, to select an envelope preset. On the right of that we have if you wish to save your own preset. And then we have a little drop down to delete to delete a preset that you've created. Okay. Um, then right here we have the trig zero reset uh, button. Now this this causes the envelope to re-trigger from the beginning every time it receives an incoming MIDI note. So um, with it disabled, that just means that if if you press another note while the the release of the previous note is still uh, releasing, so let's say the volume hasn't reached zero yet, um, with this disabled, if you press another key, the volume will just start up from this. So wherever the envelope currently is at, it will reset from that position. Where, uh, so an example of this is if it's selected and you're playing a note, the, this tail will follow on uh, regardless of whether you press a new note, whereas if it's off, it will, uh, when you press a new note, it'll, the previous note that's been pressed, the tail, it'll pick up from there. It won't restart at zero each time you press a note. Okay, hope that made sense. Um, so let's, if you've got a, a long release and you press a note, it's going to follow this this uh, envelope. It's going to get here and it's going to follow this tail. With this on, if you press another note, this tail is going to carry on decaying. But the new note is going to start right back from here and go up. Whereas if it's off and um, you've pressed a note and it gets to this position here, when you press a new note, it's going to start from here and start up. That's um, that's pretty much what that means. Then we've got this linear button here. Uh, defaultly, it's off, which means that this envelope is set to logar uh, logarithmic, uh, which pretty much just is from a straight line to a curved line. There's a whole bunch of maths behind it, but Luckily with massive, it just it shows you on the on the graph, okay. And then um, uh, we're going to use just the fourth envelope for this, just so that you can see uh, what these next three buttons mean. So gate means when you press and hold a note, it's going to follow the attack. It's going to hold on this level, right? So it's going to go up. 
it's going to get to the end of this level and it's going to hold here for however long you hold the key. When you release the key, it's going to follow the path of the release. Right, so you can hold this a note down forever and it will never stop. With one shot, okay, I don't know if you'll be able to tell that I'm holding a note. No, you won't, but try it out and you, you'll get it. So one shot, no matter how long you hold the note for, it's going to follow these settings. So your decay becomes very um, important because the longer your decay is, the longer the note's going to go, and the shorter decay is, the shorter the note's going to go. Now decay only really works. Um, well, this is this is very general, but with your gate, your decay only really plays a huge role when your level is at zero or near about. If it's full, this will mean absolutely nothing. Whereas on one shot, it'll make a huge difference. So let's go with the short decay. Okay, there you have it. And then hold is just means it's going to use the attack, get to the end of the, um, the decay section, decay and sustain section, and then it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay there until a new note is pressed. Okay, um, so now let's look here. Okay, so we've got our um, velocity slider and our KTR slider. What uh, KTR stands for is uh, key tracking. Now, how these affect the sound is um, when, when this is full, it's going to affect how much... Uh, so the harder you press the key, the more effect this envelope is going to have, or the full effect this envelope is going to have, and then the softer you press it, the the less effect it will have. So this envelope is routed onto the main amp, so you're going to hear this in in terms of volume. Okay, so let's let's really press the key softly. Keep an eye on this meter up here. Okay, and then if I press it harder, okay, so that's, and now if this was on like a filter, then depending on how the note, hard the note was pressed, it would have more of an effect on the filter or less effect on the filter, just, um, and then you can also set it at 50%. So it doesn't, it's not only full or nothing, there's some uh, values in between as well, which, uh, just help you create some slightly different things. Then your key tracking fader, pretty much, it's kind of weird. Um, it means that the higher the pitch, the softer the the note value, I mean the, the softer or the less effect that this filter is going to have. So the amplitude of the, f of the envelope, sorry, not the filter. So the amplitude of the envelope will be less the higher the pitch is. So let me, that might sound confusing, so let me just demonstrate it. We're going to start at the top of the keyboard, and by the top, I mean the, the highest pitch. Again, if you would keep an eye on this meter, and you'll see it slowly uh, increase in volume. Okay, so I'm going to play then now the highest note and then the lowest note. So you can see the difference in volume there. Right, with this off, let's look at the difference now. There you go. Okay, now let's have a look at our ADSR um, controllers. Okay, so you've got your delay time, which w what is very nice about Massive is that it's got this graph right here that's telling you that you're seeing what it's doing. So again, the best thing to do is just to fiddle around with it. So your delay time is pretty much going to be how long it takes for this to begin. And your envelope is going to remain at zero for, for that point. Okay, so let's have a look. So delay. And okay, keep an eye up here and you'll see that's going to turn uh, orange when I press a note 
Um, so there's a slight delay, but there's always a slight delay. Then um, okay, so that's what delay does, and then attack um, is going to control from zero to the f highest point set by your level. Okay, so from it's a pretty much from zero to whatever value this level is set. Attack is the time it takes to get from A to B. So to demonstrate this with a short attack, the sound is going to get to its peak quickly. With a long attack, the sound is going to take a longer period of time. Okay. Okay, so your le your level is going to just select the first level at which your attack knob is effective. So from A to B, the time it takes f to get from A to B is controlled by your attack knob. Your level is just adjusting the volume of this point here. Okay, so if you want it to be soft, you obviously it's lower. And then if you want it to be louder, it's higher. Then we have your decay which is pretty much how long it's going to um, sustain for. Um, and then you've got your level again to control the next point. So if you wanted to go straight down, you would switch linear on. If you wanted to follow the logarithmic curve, you switch linear off, right? Then you've got this, these fancy knobs here, which we're going to get to in a second, but first we're going to look at release. Okay, so, so uh, release is just going to set the time and how long it takes for your sound to um, get from this level here to zero. And um, I'm going to show you that quickly. When I press a note, this is going to turn orange. And when I let it go, it's going to turn orange again. And you'll see that the note will carry on fading out even though I'm not holding a key. Right, let's turn the release up. Okay, there you go. Um, now this morph section here. Okay, so how you switch this on is you're going to put this onto one, and you'll see there's a whole new section just added bef between this decay part here and the release. Okay, how does all of this work? Okay, so how it works is you can pick another um, another kind of shape through this here. So two is there, three is going to be there. So let's say we want a curve here. Right, but you can select two. That's where the beauty of this comes in. So we can have that and steps. Right, so now you'll see that one is white and the other one is like, is like a gray kind of color. Okay. So you can see what S-loop is doing here. It's controlling the time from this point here to this point here okay and then morph you're going to see morph is pretty much um, a percentage value between whatever selected here and whatever is selected here okay so if you want it midway you put it there now let's have a listen to the sound See how the sound was changing volume there? That is the um, that is the the audio following this path here. So your morph you can change between the two, and the the path it's going to take is the white color line. Okay, and then you've got this loop button. Okay, and you'll you'll see as I move it from one to two. This, these dots will light up. On one, it's going to light up here. On two, it's going to light up here. What does that mean? Well, what it means is when it's selected to one, it's going to follow th the part created by your envelope. When it gets to this section here, it's going to follow this new path we've just created one time and then follow this release. On two, it's going to go through here, 
and then back through here. It's not going to repeat this process twice. It's going to run through it and then run backwards through it. And what this this um, this l sort of l light is telling you is where it's ending, which is important to know because if you want it to end at a higher point, because it's got to go from here into the release. So, so on 4, it's going to go through here once. When it gets to here, it's going to go through. It's going to go back. It's going to go through again, back. And then when you release the key, or if it's set to one shot, this is more effective when it's set to one shot because it's going to carry on doing it as its part. It's going to exit. But now, here's something interesting. Have a look. I'm going to stop that and set it to 2 just because it's going to take forever then. Okay. When one shot is disabled, oh, sorry, when one shot is enabled and it's on 1, it's going to go straight out. When the value is here, It's important to remember that the release time is going to be affected from this point. Right. When gate is on and it, you've got the loop set to an even number, you, when you're holding it down, it's going to follow this path, it's going to come back, but then it's going to stay at whatever value this is on. When it's on an odd number, it's going to stay at whatever value this is on. So it's going to follow this, it's going to, whatever settings you have here, but then the volume is going to stay at what it, wherever this is before you let the button go and press release, because remember the difference between gate and one shot. Okay, so that is your envelope completed. Okay, now we've got your LFO, your uh, performer and your stepper. You can change between these by changing this here. You'll notice no matter what I set this to, there's a couple of things that always stay the same. That is this top bar here always stays the same. Um, While well, the first three sections always stay the same. right? You've always got a control here and a mono button. You also always have this rate um, block on the far left. So we're going to look at the rate block on the far left first and this bar so that we don't have to redo it every single time we go through a new a new modulation setting. Okay so if we look at our LFO we've got a rate setting here that is controlling the rate of the LFO. I'm just going to initialize this preset here so that our envelope is back to uh, so it's not going to sound completely weird and we're going to put a low pass filter on filter 1 just so that if I need to demonstrate something uh, that can be done easily okay so your rate is going to control the speed at which your um, your um, LFO goes from its peak to its trough so Let's have a look at it slow. You barely hear a difference, and I'm just going to move this rate up, and you'll see what it does. Okay, then the sync button, when I switch it on, it's going to um, give us a new button. But also, you'll see this is not a knob anymore, it's now a ratio. This is with uh, sync on, it's going to sync it to your your tempo, so you can go between your bars at the top and your beat. So let's say you want it to be to say uh, modulate with the kick drum or something, you'll set that to one four, and it's going to pretty much create a four four rhythm. Okay, and then as you turn it up, obviously it's going to get. So pretty much that's just to play around with. You'll you'll get the hang of it. The top is the top uh, number is your your bars and your bottom number is your beats. And then if you've got 
3 over 12, then obviously that's this the same as 1 over 4. 3 over 16 creates a new one that you wouldn't have with like an even number. So you can you can um, play with those and create all the different uh, types of sound. Uh, then this little pause button here, what that does is it syncs the LFO to your song position and the clock instead of just the clock with it off. So what that will do is um, so if you've got say this LFO filter, this LFO on your filter and you go into your, uh, let me just attach this quickly so I can show this better, um, and you draw in your pattern let's just say for argument's sake that your pattern is this long okay so let's say you've got your filter I mean your ratio onto one, uh, 1 over 1 okay so that means that your filter is gonna okay so when I move it here the filter is gonna know from the song position where it's supposed to be where it's supposed to be as opposed to just resetting every time it's played okay so that's your pause button which obviously just stands for position or means position okay let me open up all my things again okay then we have this restart which is just gonna restart the in uh, the LFO from zero each time a note is pressed. So without that, now the LFO is turning. If I press it like that, it's going to still follow the same envelope. If I if I put this off, each time I press uh, the button, it's going to it's going to trigger it right from the beginning. Then your your um, amp. Is just controlling how much this affects it's almost like a draw wet kind of knob so on zero you'll hear the left is not working at all as I move this up you'll hear it all start to take effect okay then we have a crossfade curve which uh, massive is actually a, a double LFO so you can change between the shape and and that shape so We'll keep it up for now, and then here you have some basic shapes that it's got um, on this middle block. On this drop down, it's got a bunch of different things that you can that you can mess with. And then if you need to just reset it, you just go back, and you can by selecting uh, two weird kind of effects and moving, I mean shapes, and moving your crossfader between them, you can create some really different weird kind of sounds. Okay. Um, so that's also this curve select part, and then we've just got this LFO, which um, which is just a little internal LFO that only affects th this year, and you um, you apply it the same way you would apply uh, any other uh, modulation. So you um, hit the crosshair, drag it over, but this this envelope can't be used on other things. It can only be used within this this block. Okay, and then um, let's see, just been fiddling around again. Then we've got this mono button here, which is also something that they all have in common. The LFO stepper and um, performance uh, modulation they all have in common is this m mono button. Now, what does this mono button do? Pretty much what it means is that when it's selected, all the LFOs are going to run in phase. When it's out in sync, they're going to run, you can have a thousand of them running at different times if you want. And that's just shown by pressing two keys at a different time. Okay, so let's have a look. Can you see, can you tell that there are two different uh, notes being pressed, but they're each running at their own, their own, um, they pretty much have their own filter to them, and the LFO is affecting them individually. When mono is on, this can't happen. It's going to uh, sync up the phase of all the um, the LFOs, but not all the LFOs inside LFO 5. LFO 6 can have its own thing happening, and whatever that's 
um, let's say you've got that on the resonance or something, then the mono switch isn't going to affect this at all, only within this within this tab. So let's have a look. I'm going to play two notes the same way I did with the mono button unchecked, and you'll see that they'll automatically snap to the same phase. <laughs> There you go. And then this internal envelope just has your attack and decay settings, which we looked at in your last, your last, um, the, the bit on envelope. So next we're going to look at the uh, performance modulation option. Okay, so you'll see th on the performance section that there is the same rate, sync, and um, amp that the, the previous LFO section had as well. All that does pretty much is it controls how quickly this is going to run through. So let's let's look. Okay, so if you see what's that, let's say to sync that up and put a one over four, each one of these is going to control one beat. Okay, but in order to demonstrate this better, we should probably attach this performance, not the LFO. So let's have a look. Right. Okay, you have an amp mod here and a crossfader uh, slider as well. Now, same as the LFO, we, we had two different options. You've got that in performance as well. And this crossfade crossfades between the two, but it only crossfades if one of if this is selected here. So with so let's put it all the way down. You will know that it's it's following the bottom now. But if I switch this off, it's following the top. So with this off, it's only going to look at the top section, right? This this crossfade bit, and then this amp mod is going to control the same way that it did on the envelope, but only if this is selected. So um, so you'll see now. So it's also like a draw wet tool. It's the same as this, but this can be used per pin up. So the louder it is, the more effect that this is going to have on the, the cutoff knob. With the less effect, it's going to have no effect, but only if these are selected. And you select them just by clicking on them. So let's just have a look and see. So wherever the start is on, that means that the start is going to take effect. Okay? Then how do we select the different shapes? you will notice that there's a button up here called load curve. Wi with load curve uh, checked, it's going to replace this rate um, box with a bunch of curves. Now what you can do is with when you click on that, you can drag or you can click and click and place a, f a bunch of different um, shapes. Now what that's going to do is, is when you apply this performance section to the cutoff, that means the cutoff is going to follow this pattern here. Right. And then, so let's have a quick look at that. I'm going to slow the rate down. Okay, that's pretty much the um, performer section down. Uh, there's also this randomize button here which is going to let you um, randomize various different um, sections within within the performance box and they simply told you right there. So next we're going to look at right then uh, lastly the stepper um, so how this works is it's like the performance button except you control the various um, points using um, steps. Okay, now you can snap to grid. That's another button at the top, which is going to snap it to values up to 12, which is ironically j exactly what a full octave is. Um, so I think they had, they had um, an uh, uh, arpeggio in mind when they, when they did this, but it's very handy to use, be used for other things. With snap to grid off, you see you can go in minim minim minimal values, and then holding down shift is going to let you f more fine tune them. 
Okay, you've got the same basic settings at the top here. One thing I did forget to mention on the performance um, section is that you can, if you move this little yellow thing around, you can move where it's going to start from. And also these blocks here, you can click and drag them and that's how many sections it's going to run through. So if you only have it on four, it doesn't matter how long you hold your button for, it's, it's going to loop through those four. And then it's going to start again. And that works for the performance section as well. Um, so if you want to start here, then you move that here. Okay. Then, um, you've still got this amp mod, which works exactly the same as the is on the performance section. So with the switch on, this is the step sequence is going to have uh, no effect. Right, but it's also got this glide mod, right? And that's a glide fader, which is going to smoothen out these transitions. But again, also only when these this is switched on. Okay, so let's have a look and see. What we're going to be able to do with this glide mod is create a smooth pattern instead of this jagged section here. Okay, pretty much that's the um, look at as well. It also has mono buttons. Thing to f um, insane. If you go to uh, randomize, then you can randomize all the levels. You can randomize just the glides or you can randomize it all. And then whatever you click on, so let's say if you were to click on randomize all, then it would remember that. So when you click on this button next to it, it will remember your previous, um, the previous thing you told it to do. And it'll, whenever you click on that, it will only randomize whatever you uh, specified it to do. Okay, so, um, so that's the modulation bits and massive. Um, I hope that helped everything. Uh, next episode is effects and then w after that we're going to look at um, voicing and oscillation tabs and then we're going to go from there. Okay, so hope you guys enjoyed episode two. Um, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, it helps me out so much. Um, follow me on Facebook, all of that fun stuff. Keep all guys.